For those of us who grew up here, you know, Fernandino, not like any other community or city, it had its uh, its history and its mysteries and uh, things that are still to this day unsolved. And uh, one of our mysteries was the uh, the mystery of uh, Sarah Alice's Island. Before we get into Sarah herself, let's talk a little bit about how Sarah came to be here in Bernardino. If you look as you're coming on to the island over the bridge uh, to the right, you'll see Sarah Alice's Island is just to the west of the airport, uh, Bernardino Municipal Airport. And they're developing that island today. And uh, but back in 1886, a man by the name of John Broadbent came from England, and he came with his two daughters. He came with Esther and Sarah Alice. His wife, her name was Sarah Hensaw Broadbent, she stayed in England, and uh, she didn't make the trip with him, and she never came uh, to America. But John and his two daughters came, and... Um, they built the, he bought Crane Island. That's the proper name. That's the name of the island. Not Sarah Alice's Island, but it, it's uh, Crane Island. But he, uh, he bought the island and they built a home there and uh, that's where they live. And John was a blacksmith. And I've often wondered how um, John and his two daughters uh, are at least Sarah knew my family. And then it dawned on me, my grandfather came here from Greece in 1912 and started working on boats and building boats. And John, in 1886, of course, he moved here, but he was a blacksmith. And um, I think there, therein lies the tie. He started doing iron work for my grandfather in the boat. And um, and there we have it. So um, in 1924, John died. And uh, Esther, the one daughter, she married and moved away. And I... That's kind of where history leaves her because I've never heard of any more about her. But Sarah remained here and she continued living in the house. And Sarah would come to town and uh, she kind of became a recluse. And uh, wherever she went, she went barefooted. And uh, there's many, many stories of people who would try to go on that island and they would be met with gunfire. And uh, it would be Sarah either shooting at them or shooting above their head to scare them off. And apparently it worked very well because uh, she wasn't bothered uh, much uh, with, with folks coming on her island. Um, but Sarah would walk from, from that island all the way to Center Street. And uh, she would stop at Mrs. Sanders' store at the corner of Ash and Third. And then she would go on down to Center and Third to the Texaco station, which was owned and operated by a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Harrell. And she would give Jimmy an empty one quart jar and he would give her a full one quart jar of burnt motor oil and Sarah would use this oil and she would rub it on itself and uh, and it was to keep the mosquitoes and the gnats and things like that off of it and a lot of us kids would see Sarah and um, now as I said Sarah would stop if I was playing outside uh, in front of our house on 5th Street. Sarah would stop, and a couple of times she gave me a few things like a spoon to dig with or 
something like that. And uh, But my grandmother and my mother would come outside and they would talk in the street and visit. Now, Sarah would never go in the house, now, even though she was invited, but never go in the house. And just yesterday, I was talking with a friend of mine, and you're going to see more of this friend because we're going to do an interview together, um, Mitch Ferreira. And uh, now Mitch was born and raised here, and his uncle, Louis Ferreira, was president of Florida National Bank. You'll go back and look at episode one. You'll see a photo of uh, Florida National Bank. And uh, Mitch was telling me yesterday that uh, his uncle Lewis was telling the family that every month uh, he received uh, um, money from England for Sarah. It wasn't much, a few dollars. but So apparently Sarah had a small bank account at the bank, too, uh, for, I guess, staples and, you know, food items and things like that. it's funny how you pick up on new things in history, local history. I mean, I had no idea about that until just yesterday. Um, but we're going to be interviewing Mitch uh, in the weeks coming. And uh, I'm sure we're going to pick up a lot of history, not only about Sarah, but about other things. But Mitch said that she would also stop at his house. and uh, They had a front porch, uh, whereas we didn't have a front porch. She would come up on the front porch and talk with his mother and and dad, but never go in the house, Uh, just would not go in the house. On November the 7th uh, in 1952, uh, Sarah's house burned to the ground. Of course, everybody was concerned about Sarah. And the more I think about it, it wasn't the day after, it was the second day after the fire. Some folks had gone to the island the day after, and Sarah couldn't be found. So the day after the fire, or two days after the fire, I went with my mother, my grandmother, my uncle, John Piliakos, and Dr. Bailey Dickens. And we went to the island to try to find uh, Sarah. And, of course, everybody had, you know, pretty much, come to the decision that Sarah was dead and had burned up in the fire. But I remember uh, my uncle and Dr. Dickens with long sticks probing in the well uh, looking for the body. And uh, even two days after the fire, uh, foul play in their mind was prevalent. And foul play in my mind, even to this day, is, is prevalent. A lot of people, uh, her body still to this day hasn't been found. And uh, a lot of people, you know, they speculate and they wonder what happened to Sarah. And uh, I have my own thoughts. I think Sarah was robbed. And uh, a lot of people thought Sarah had money. A lot of people thought she was sitting on a lot of money out there. And uh, I think Sarah was robbed. And when they found out she really didn't have what they thought she had, they simply killed her. And uh, when they killed her, uh, they had to get rid of the body. And probably one of the things they could have done was just simply throw her body into the intercoastal waterway or something like that. Or maybe not. Uh, Now, they're developing the island today. Uh, They've dedicated a park. The name of the park is Sarah Alice Park. And uh, they really, it's it's a beautiful, beautiful island. And um, I really think it's going to, you know, it's going to really be a nice, nice development. Um, And will they discover her body? Uh, Who knows? Uh, In a way, I hope they do. And I hope that they will give her a, a proper funeral and a burial. And I would hope that they would bury her on the island, you know, with, with a with a proper monument. Um, but you know, that's our. Uh, there's only a couple of photos available 
that I know of of Sarah Alex. Uh, I ended up with with them uh, where I don't remember uh, years and years ago. And they're very poor, poor photographs. But that's the mystery of uh, the history and the mystery of uh, Sarah Alex. And uh, so I hope you uh, got a little bit out of it. I hope for you uh, old timers, it brought back a lot of memories. I hope for you newcomers, it, uh, it gave you a little bit of an insight of uh, the history of this area. And, um, you know, just enjoy these episodes.